One of the great mobility weapons in Albion Online right now is the War Gloves. In this video, we're going to be talking about the Fists of Avalon as well as the Battle Bracers. Both of them act the same way, but have little different quirks that we're going to talk about. But overall, in this video, what we're going to be going through is how to get set up for open world roaming in solo and small group scenarios for PvE and PvP content alike. So to get started, this is what we are rocking. We have the Fists of Avalon on right now i have a pair of tier 6.1 which is just enchant one but you can use any of them 4.1 or 5.1 depending on your budget they are a little bit more pricey overall the fist of avalon because they are an avalonian weapon but the battle bracers are a cheaper second the first one we're going to go over though is the fist of avalon so if we click on the fist we have the ability tree as well as the passives these abilities are the ones that you're going to want to be running when you use the gloves your first cue is going to be dragon leap and it does a dash towards the targeted position, 2.5 meter radius. And if you hit at least one enemy, you can use Dragon Punch, which is essentially an uppercut that throws the enemy in the air and interrupts any spell casting or anything that they're doing. So it looks like this. It's just a slide. It has a it has the, the cooldown for it, just a four second cooldown after you use it. And it comes up pretty quick. So you just slide with this. And if you do hit an enemy, you can follow it up with an uppercut. So just like this, you could press Q again and follow it up with an uppercut. And then it does go into a seven second cooldown. Another thing that you can do if you don't want to use the uppercut is you can slide and hit and wait for the circle to dissipate. And then you can just keep using Qs over and over again once it's up and ready. So you can just keep repeating Qs to get extra damage. This is one of the areas I use to get a lot of damage out of the gloves as you do use primary attacks but when it comes to pvp the abilities are what reign supreme in these gloves which really just make or break a scenario their primary attacks aren't as important as their abilities are the next ability we have on the tree so i'm going to go back to the gloves is the triple kick now we have other ones like counter backhanded strike devastating combo but when it comes to triple kick all of these abilities on the gloves they double as a mobility option so this is what makes the gloves almost the king of roaming in solo and small groups their mobility is just it's insane. They can get in fights, they can get out of fights. They're very good at maneuvering the battlefield and controlling the flow of the fight. So the next one is going to be triple kick. What this does is it dashes towards the targeted position, repeating kicks all enemies you pass through. It deals 149 damage to players up to three times and it pulls one enemy along with you and it has a range of 11 meters so you press for us we press w or your ability on your phone and you can control how far the kick is going to be going and you can point it in a direction and you can let the kick fly the thing with this kick is you can slide kick slide triple kick to get away or slide triple kick to chase people down as well as the kick is it pulls another enemy player along with you so again it interrupts spell casting and it disrupts what they're doing so not only does this uppercut disrupt what they're doing but this triple kick can also disrupt players as well as double as a mobility option to get away from the fight and create distance the last ability we have for the fist of avalon and this is the difference between the battle bracers and the fist of avalon so we have the purifying combination it is a dive kick that you leap towards a targeted position now let me let me show you guys the battle bracers e first and now there's two differences that we need to notice between the battle bracers and fist of avalon is the passives so if you use a 5.1 battle bracers you'll be missing out on the passive we don't care about these extra abilities but we do care about the passive we're missing on these gloves they have the extra ability as well as the passive but they are a little bit more expensive than the 5.1 pair overall it's a little bit cheaper but we're missing out on this beautiful passive i'll be showing you guys so for this we have the slide and we have the kick and then we have the E, it's called Falcon Smash. So you float into the air and you become immune to all crowd control effects for up to two seconds. So when you go up into the air, no one can stop you, no one can disrupt you or root you, no crowd control effects can affect you. When you recast the ability to dive towards a target position, you deal physical damage within a six meter radius based on the distance from you. So we're gonna float in the air and we're gonna hit these mobs. Now there is a difference on the area that you're hitting. So when you hit within the circle, you're hitting the max amount of damage, but on the outside of the circle, there is a radius that's gonna be hitting less damage. On here, it says 1056 and the six meter radius, it says 664. It also depends on the armor of your opponent and resistance, as well as the DPS that you're wearing on your person, but you'll be able to see the difference in DPS on these mobs. So we float into the air and then we pick where we're gonna hit. We hit 586 on these mobs and 369 on this mob this one this mob was in the six meter radius but this mob was in the four meter circle that our initial hit was four 
Now this has a 20 second cooldown and this can be used as a mobility option. So you can slide, you can kick, you can float, and then you can fly. So this is a full movement. All three are movement abilities. Very good for getting in and getting out. One thing to keep in mind though, is after you float into the air, once you start flying with your fist, you can be interrupted. A curse staff can root you, a mace can root you, another glove's kick can disrupt you, you won't be able to finish and actually get the hit off and your E will be wasted. So this is something to keep in mind that when you are flying through the air, your ability can be disrupted and you won't even get damage off. Now switching back over to the Fists of Avalon, we have the Purifying Combination. The first one is a Dive Kick. This acts the same as the Battle Bracers. With these, your first ability is just you fly a certain distance, so on here it's going to be 12 meters, and you fly that distance. And then you have your second combination, which is Purifying Fist, which you punch the area in front of you, and you deal 945 damage. This Purifying Combination does a little bit more damage than the Falcon Smash. The difference is, is your first movement ability is immune to all crowd control effects. So this first E that we do cannot be disrupted. And the big difference that you need to think about with that is if it can't be disrupted, it is an uninterruptible movement ability. So not only can you jump into the fight and initiate this ability without being disrupted, but you can slide, you can kick, and you can also use this E without being interrupted while in the middle of that distance that you're creating. Now the last one is the purifying fist on here. It's the second part of the combo. This E brings a ton of utility to the fight. So this is why Fists of Avalon is so strong in a small group scenario. If you're up against healers, if you're up against swords, up against spears, anything that has buffs, the purifying fist has a ability to purge all buffs from the enemies. That means it removes them. They don't have their extra damage. It says it, it removes everything except healing over time effects. Anything that's considered a buff is huge. So what you would do is you would fly in, it would hit them up and then you get your punch off. And the thing is, is that it throws them in the air for one second. The cast time on the Purifying Fist is 0.6 seconds. So if you land on someone with your first dive kick, you have enough time to channel and use Purifying Fist right away and you will be guaranteed a hit on the enemy. If they put a bubble up, the Everlasting Spirit, you can purge that right off of them. Like it, it is completely insane. Like it is so strong. Now that is going to be the fists. Well, we have the last thing to talk about, which is the passive and it's called Hard to Catch. And it activates when you use your W. So it increases your damage resistance as well as your crowd control resistance by 402 for three seconds. So this W right here not only protects you, but it prevents people from using crowd control effects on you. Well, not it doesn't fully prevent them, but it makes it harder for you to catch overall on these you don't have that passive so that is the difference that you're kind of paying for a lower level weapon with the passive but i usually run 5.1 or 6.1 and i just pay the price if you don't have as much money and you want to be running the gloves more often in an expendable fashion then you want to run battle bracers battle bracers are just as strong they're really good fists of avalon just bring a little bit more utility to the fight now we're going to go over the armors that i'm wearing so the first one i have is fiend cal i run aggression which is damage and healing as well as the purge you can purge all buffs from the target enemy so if someone procs their run unless it's a royal you can purge the run off of them so if someone uses wanderlust any run that they use except the royal shoes you can purge it right off of them they're, they're not running anymore as well as you have force field which sends enemies back six meters this can be really strong running solo as you can bump people into mobs so if they get near you you can bump them away to make distance uh, you could put this on and bump them away and then create this like just run from them so you could run up to them bump them away and then use all your abilities to get away a lot of times what i'll do is that if someone's running at me i'll bop them away and then I'll use all my abilities to get away like this and then I'll use refreshing sprint to keep running and I'll keep using cues over and over again and it creates a ton of distance as well as increases your cooldown rate and that is the reason we run leather shoes so we run hunter shoes you can run any leather shoe it'll be just fine we run refreshing sprint so it increases your movement speed by 80 percent as well as your cooldown rate by 33.33 percent for five seconds so it helps you get your abilities back if you need to get away or stay in the fight longer and then we run Balanced Mind for the increased damage and a little bit of defense. We don't care about attack speed for the gloves. We're not actually punching with the gloves as much as we are using our abilities. The abilities are what packs a punch and really can secure a kill for the gloves. Assassin Jacket. Now, this is a very important part of your solo roaming build. In a small group, you can wear Hellion Jacket, and I'll show you guys the abilities on that. But when you're solo roaming, it is very important to be using Assassin Jacket. It is so strong. The invis on it is it's unmatched. You go invisible for eight seconds, and you're within a 14 meter radius. You will be revealed, but it 
it also increases your damage by 4% for every 0.5 seconds you stay invisible. Now this is very strong, especially with the E on the Battle Bracers. It's not as good with the Fist of Avalon, but it can still be strong in general just to get extra damage in any area. The thing is with the Battle Bracers, so we have, we hit for 587, right? And now we have a 20 second cooldown. So I'm just going to pop refreshing sprint to help that go faster. But then what we do is we go invis for eight seconds. So once we go invisible, this is stacking up. Our damage is increased by 4%, 10 times over 40% damage increase. Now we're revealed. Boom, we hit for 756 now. So if you go invis and you have your E up, you can also use this to wait for your cooldowns and you get those 10 stacks as long as you don't walk 14 meters away because you have to stay invisible to build the stacks. Your E will pack a punch coming out of the invis. And that's something to really keep in mind if you're running battle braces with the assassin jacket. We run Martlock cape with it just to give us extra defense when our health drops below 25%. We run invis pots just because these really help you to outplay your opponent. Turns you invisible. You don't want to use any abilities, but you can really use it to juke out opponents get a little bit farther th from them before you use any of your movement abilities to help create space i personally use eel stew increases all damage and my cooldown rate by 6.7 percent for 30 minutes it's really strong in pvp now we're going to go over to my main house and we're just going to throw on one of the gloves it doesn't matter which one and i'm going to show you guys some different alternatives that you can be running with this build that it's this is kind of like what i run and i'm just showing you guys what's really worked for me and we're gonna i'm gonna show you guys some clips here once we get done talking through it but be, these are some of the different alternatives as well as the mounts here is the hellion jacket which has a lifesteal aura it's strong with small group because if you're fighting multiple opponents what it does is it does more damage as the lower their health is as well as it steals 100 percent of the health the enemy has lost so you have heavy sustain i have a clip of a 2v5 that i had in the avalonian roads and you can see urex gf the buddy that was with me he was using the hellion jacket and you can see his health just staying up as he procced it and all of those enemies were inside of it it was just keeping his health up and his sustain was crazy as well as you just run balance mine you can also run quick thinker to increase your cooldown rate it's up to you but usually i just run balance mine just for all the extra damage Bean cow does get a little bit more expensive like this one's a 5.2 it's 101k estimate if you do want to run just force field instead of running purge you can run a mage cow or a scholar cow scholar cow is cheaper mage cow has the poison if you want to use it but both of them uh, have the force field as well as any of the cloth helmets these are just cheaper alternatives as well as for the boots if you do want to one wanderlust or rejuvenating sprint for heals you can so soldier boots are also a cheap alternative uh, the hunter boots are a little bit less but soldier boots you can run 4.1 so tier 4 enchant one sets you can run 5.1 you can run 6.1 i'm usually running 6.1 but for the purpose of this video we are showing this build it's worth 377k with battle bracers it's worth 335k 4.1 would be cheaper but these are just cheaper alternatives that you can use that i wanted to show you we also have the undead cape which has a vanisher ability so when your health drops below 15 percent you turn invisible for six seconds and you can still use abilities while you're invisible so for those six seconds you can still use your movement abilities to get away from the fight you can use your run anything that's ready to go you can use then we have the mounts so i use the saddle gray wolf it has a five second gallop but it has a two times mount up speed so i'm going to show you guys right now as compared to the swift claw swift claw is a cheaper alternative but i usually run the gray wolf it is a little bit more expensive but the reason is the mount up time i just want to show you guys there's also the a giant stag or the moose the difference between these is a moose is as fast as a swift claw the stag is not but if you do like gathering the stag and the moose are very good because they do have the carry weight that binds to your person so if you do get dismounted you still have that carry weight as well as to look at their gallop time they have a two second gallop time so if you start running within two seconds you'll get to full speed as opposed to both the gray wolf and the swift claw have a five second time to gallop so that's something to keep in mind if you do get slowed or hit by an enemy it'll take less time to get back up to speed but let me show you guys the mount up time for the swift claw. So if we count this right here, that is the mount up time for the swift claw. Now, if we put the gray wolf on, you'll see it has a two second mount up time. It's very fast. Two second mount up time is crazy. And I have saved probably five mil, five million silver on this account so far because I decided to use a gray wolf over a swift claw. Now they are estimated like 385k right now, but if you're running a 500k 
to 700k set or more, you're going to want to run the Grey Wolf. And what I have a guy in my chat who made a really good analogy on Twitch. And he said, if you're driving a Lamborghini, you're not going to want to put discount tires on it. Now, if so if you're running a 700k set, but you're running a tier three horse, you should probably rethink what mount you're going to be running because every fight you take out in PVP zones is not going to work. The amount of people that might jump you or they're going to be completely like 1500 IP or higher, they're going to be crazy. If you can get away and mount up in two seconds, that is the difference between life and death. Two second mount up time on the Grey Wolf is insane. It's just the Grey Wolf though. The Dire Wolf doesn't have a two second mount up time. It's just the Grey Wolf. There are other mounts that have it, but they're ex exponentially more expensive. This mount is very strong. That's why you see a lot of people running this because it's easy to get in, get out. As well as if you get dismounted and you get away, you have chance to mount up. Now, these are some other cheaper alternatives. Like we have Beef Stew, which increases damage. We have Eel Stew that's Enchanted 1. It is a little bit more expensive, but you do a little bit more extra damage. 8.1% as opposed to the 6.7 this one brings. Fish is always good when you're farming because you get health regeneration out of combat so between killing mobs you'll be full health and then we have roast pork so you can steal some damage this one is kind of a just one i kind of wanted to throw out there you can also run omelet for better cooldowns but this is all the alternatives i want to show you i do have a couple clips to show you guys the first one is going to be with the battle bracers i was in a zone and i was snuck up on by a group i managed to get out and you'll see that I have a quick mount up with the Grey Wolf. I'm able to get out of that fight. As well as I have a 2v2 with the Fists of Avalon and a 2v5. So make sure to stick around for that. That one is pretty crazy. But those are the three clips I'm going to show you. I hope you guys enjoyed the walkthrough of the roaming guide. And I hope you enjoy the clips. Stay awesome, guys. I'll see you in the next YouTube video. And I'll see you all in Albion Online.